win, lose, or draw, I wanted to show up and go for a dream. I'd been without a dream ever since high school. And if you don't have a vision or a dream, uh, it's, it's a hopeless. You feel hopeless. And, uh, but uh, one night I went for a walk, Austin, Texas, and uh, I looked up and it was m- millions of stars. And I prayed the shortest prayer, one of them I've ever prayed in my life. I just said, God, would you please help me be a songwriter? And uh, I didn't hear any voices or anything, uh, but I had this instant knowledge in my heart that that was a path I was supposed to take. And uh, after six months of that, no songs. And I went for another walk, and I said, I thought you were going to send me some songs. I'm still going to thank you till they get here. So that next week, I wrote six songs. Um, I had pieces, like a verse would work with a chorus, and the songs just came together. And the night I wrote the sixth song, the next morning I went to lunch with a buddy of mine, I had the lyric in my back pocket, and I pulled the lyric out of my pocket. We were standing in line at a cafeteria, and I read him that lyric, and he started laughing. He goes, man, I, I bet Willie Nelson would like that. And I said, really, you think so? And at that moment, a lady tapped me on the shoulder, and I looked over, and, and she said, uh, are you a songwriter? And I said, yes, ma'am. It's the first time I'd ever told anybody that in my life. And she said, are you any good? And I said, uh, I don't know. I said, I said, I think so, but you have to judge for yourself. And she said, well, I might be able to help you. Here's my name and number. Give me a call. I might be able to help you. I knew, uh, just like I'm looking at you, that was the lady that was going to help me get to where I was supposed to go. Uh, I called her up. It turns out she was a sister-in-law to a legendary fiddle player named Johnny Gimble, who's played with everybody from Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys to Merle Haggard and on and on. And her best friend in the world was executive vice president Warner Brother Records in Nashville. Uh, So I played her my songs, and she said, uh, let's do a demo. I went out to Johnny Gimble's house, never sung in a microphone in my life, never played with anybody in my life. Up to that point, I'd been in my bedroom. We we did a demo tape. He played fiddle. I played guitar. Uh, he said, kick it. He said, he goes, what key is this first song in? And I said, uh, I don't know. <laughs> and, he, and he said, uh, okay, what's the first chord? And I said, C. He goes, good. Key of C, let's go. And he kicked off. He goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me see that guitar. And he strummed it. He goes, did you realize this guitar is tuned about three octaves too high? And I said, I don't know. I just wind them till they get tight. And uh, he, <laughs> he, he goes, wah, 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 wah. I tuned it down, handed the guitar back to me, and we played it through. We did every song from start to finish, no stop, on a cheap little microphone and a cheap little recorder, a cassette recorder. And the lady I met in the cafeteria sent it to her friend in Nashville, And I didn't hear anything for three months. And I called the lady up, Linda Orsack, and I said, Linda, do you mind if I call Warner Brothers in Nashville? She goes, no, help yourself. Here's the number. So I called Warner Brother Records, and I get the receptionist, who was not very friendly. And uh, I said, my name is Alan Shamblin. I sent Martha Sharp a cassette. Uh, about three months ago, and I was just wondering what she thought of it. And, and uh, I gave the lady my number, and I hung up the phone. And I worked in an office where there were tables around this room. There's about five of us, and the secretary had gone out to lunch. My boss had gone out to lunch, but it was just some guys doing a real estate appraisal. And I turned around, and I said, I just called Warner Brother Records in Nashville, and we were all kind of cutting up. And right about that time, the phone rang. And I reached over, and the receptionist was out, and I just grabbed it, and I went, hello. And a lady goes, "Uh, could I speak to Alan Shamlin? And I said, "Uh, this is he. And she said, this is Martha Sharp, who is executive vice president of Warner Brothers. And uh, she said, I heard your cassette, and I like it. 
and uh, I like your voice. She goes, do you sing in public? And I said, yes, ma'am. And I've never sang in public in my life. Uh, she said, uh, I'm going to get on. I'd like to. I'm coming down to San Antonio with a producer named Barry Beckett. Barry produced Bob Dylan, Leonard Skinner, on and on. She said, we're going to go see a guy. We're thinking about signing to a record deal named Randy Travis. And we're going to get a rental car and come see you perform. And I said, okay, okay. Uh, uh, so I hung up the phone and I, I, I go, has anybody in here heard of a guy named Randy Travis? That was before he got signed. And in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, poor dude, he's a struggling uh, artist, but I'm fixing to be famous, you know. Uh, so anyway, Martha and Barry came to town, and I'm going to speed this up because there's a lot I want to get to in this, in this talk. But uh, they came to town. I practiced four songs for about three months over and over and over. I had them grooved into my soul. And I asked a guy at a little club if I could sit in during his break and so some people from Warner Brothers could hear me play. And I walked in, and the, the waitress, I said, please don't sit anybody at this little table because some people from Warner Brothers in Nashville are coming to hear me. And she looked at me like, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, and I told the guy, I said, don't call me up till they're here, you know. And so... They, the guy starts playing, and immediately the waitress sets some people in that, those chairs. Uh, they weren't there, and the guy said, don't call me up. They're not here. And he goes, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Alan Shamlin. And I, went, and I walked up there, and I did four songs that I hadn't practiced, and I thought they were my B songs. And I thought, well, I'll save my good ones for when they get here. Well, unbeknownst to me, they walked in during the first song, and I couldn't see the, the lights. And I, I did those four songs, and when I came off the stage, they were both smiling. And they said, we love that, and you want to go get a glass of tea or whatever? And I said, yeah. And we sat down, and they encouraged me to move to Nashville. <laughs> 